What's up guys, this is Bobby Douglas, back again, and welcome to part 3 of my 2020 NBA Draft Big Board Reveal. Today we'll be tackling players ranked from 31 to 45 on my board, so let's get right into it. Coming in at 45 is Washington big man Isaiah Stewart. The former 5-star prospect has nice touch around the rim, as he averaged 17 points on 57% shooting, and he also has a strong and thick frame at 6'9", 250 that allows him to carve out space well for rebounds and putbacks. Stewart has a standing reach of 7'4", which allows him to contest shots at the rim despite his relatively small height for his position. I do worry about Stewart because of his lack of offensive versatility. He's a solid post operator, but he also tends to get himself in trouble when he puts the ball on the floor, and he can be easily prone to turnovers when pressured. Defensively, I'm not sure I buy his switchability either, hence why I have him as a second round pick. At 44, I have Mamadi Diakite. I really like the Virginia big man because of his defensive versatility. He managed to be the anchor of a stout Cavalier squad this past season, as he was formidable in the post and surprisingly a menace on the perimeter, where he held his own quite well and displayed the foot speed and IQ to switch onto nearly any position. His offensive game progressed as well, as he hit 37% of his threes, while averaging 13.7 points a game. My concern with Diakite comes from his lack of offensive skill. I worry about his passing ability and his court vision, and I'm not entirely sold on his offensive efficiency either. He is also quite slight for a center at 6'9", 224 pounds, and I worry about his explosivity at the NBA level. Coming in at 43, I have Arizona guard Nico Mannion. Mannion has great court vision and displayed a lot of skill at Arizona, where he averaged 14 points and 5 assists per game. I think he's a very smart basketball player, and that should translate immediately. I worry about Mannion, though, because I don't think he possesses the burst or athleticism to truly thrive in the NBA. He struggled against college competition, only hitting around 39% of his shots and 32% from three, and he really couldn't get any separation at times. I don't think he'll be a positive NBA defender either, and so in my mind, his IQ can only take him so far. That's why I have him as a second-round pick. At 42, I have Duke guard Trey Jones. I like Jones' grit and grind playing style, as I think he's one of the best on-ball defenders in the class. He also has enough moxie to get by on the offensive end, where he averaged 16 points and 6 assists per game last season. Ultimately, though, it's difficult for me to put a first-round label on a guy whose shooting and athleticism don't really project his strengths at the NBA level. I like Jones as a guy who can get by based on feel for the game, but I don't see him being as effective as he was in college. 41st on my board is Sholay guard Abdullah Indoy. I really like Indoy as a big guard. At 6'7", Indoy has shown that he can be switchable on 1-3 through three in the NBA, while also leading an offense, as he averaged 10 points and 4 assists, while knocking down 44% of his threes in 25 LNB Pro A games this past season. He is most likely a stash candidate, so he won't be coming over this season, but I still like him as a guy who can come in and make an instant impact once he enters the NBA. There are concerns about his foot speed and defensive effort, though. When I watched him play, he seemed to struggle staying attached to guards on the perimeter, and I'm also not entirely sure if he has the court vision to play point in the NBA. But at 6'7", he should be able to play a variety of roles on the offensive end. At 40, I have Louisville wing Jordan Wara. I really like Nora as one of the best shooters in the draft. At Louisville, he hit 40% of his threes on decent shot difficulty, while also pouring in 18 points a game. He might be the best candidate to follow in the footsteps of Duncan Robinson or Kyle Korver, while also offering some more explosive athleticism as well. Defensively, Nora does have issues. He has slow feet and doesn't always look engaged, and that would be his biggest drawback in terms of NBA success. Still, I really buy the shooting to the point where that might be all he needs to be on an NBA roster. Coming in at 39 is Tyjon Alexander. My main appeal with Alexander is his scoring versatility. He's a 6'4", 3-level scorer who averaged 17 points a game last year, and he also emerged as Creighton's most dependable perimeter defender as well. I could see Alexander bolstering bench units for NBA teams in the very near future, as his offensive game is both polished and efficient. My concerns with Alexander are just upside-related. As a 6'4 off-ball guard, he's not going to be a focal point offensively or defensively, and you aren't drafting him as a starter. To me, having him at 39 is a value pick and one that should pay off quite well. At 38, I have Arizona big man Zeke Naji. Naji burst onto the scene as arguably Arizona's best player this past season, as the freshman from Minnesota averaged 16 points and 8.6 rebounds a game, and showed a lot of upside thanks to his 6'11", 240-pound frame. Naji is a fluid mover, as he can stay in front of perimeter handlers, while also rotating down into the block to contest shots. I call him a garbage man because he seems to have an endless motor that propels him to getting loose balls and highly contested rebounds. While I like Najee as a prospect, I have some concerns in terms of his overall instincts. While he hustles well, he doesn't seem to react quickly to stimuli presented in front of him. He's shown promise from three, but his college percentages weren't spectacular, and he needs to put on some weight. But he does have significant upside in my view. Coming in at 37 is Colorado wing Tyler Bay. I like Bay because of his defensive ability. This guy can guard probably 1 through 5 in the NBA due to his strength and instincts. 
While he isn't the quickest player in terms of his feet, he has some of the quickest hands I've seen at the college level. He's always pressuring the ball and disrupting passing lanes, which led him to averaging one and a half steals and one block a game last season. His offense is still coming along. While he somehow hit 42% of his threes last year, I'd argue that this came on low volume and this isn't projectable to NBA range. If he can be an average three-point shooter in the league, I'll be happy. He doesn't offer much off the dribble, and he isn't a playmaker, but damn, his defense can get him a spot on any roster. At 36, I'll bring in Michigan State forward Xavier Tillman. Tillman is probably one of my favorite players in the class purely because of his attitude. He's always got a smile on his face and plays a team-first game where he can contribute in a variety of ways. At a thick 6'8", 245, Tillman put up 13-10 and 10 last year while also being an extremely physical and imposing defender. Tillman also impresses a passer, making really smart dishes to teammates in the short roll. I do worry about Tillman's switchability on the perimeter. I think he has the determination to provide adequate resistance, but his lack of lateral quickness may hurt him. I'm also not sold he can offer much of a scoring punch outside the paint, but again, if a team isn't asking him to expand that part of his game, it shouldn't really matter. At 35, I have Charleston guard Grant Riller. Riller has one of the most complete scoring packages in the class, as he is a fantastic finisher at the rim, often contorting his body and using his vertical athleticism to finish over bigger and stronger defenders. Riller is also a volume scorer, as he averaged 22 points a game on 49% from the floor and 36% from three. Riller worries me due to his out-of-control playing style, as this often leads to unnecessary turnovers. My guess is that this improves once he doesn't have to be the guy anymore, but he was also uninspiring as a defender. But again, I think him carrying less of an offensive load will help his outlook on that end. At 34, give me Texas Tech's Jemias Ramsey. Ramsey has great athleticism as a 6'4 combo guard. The freshman got 15 points a game last year while hitting 42% of his threes, and he also showed some ability to facilitate, as he used his speed and strength to create open looks for teammates. Ramsey also impresses a defender, as he emerged as a solid starter for Tech, which is a defensively oriented program. I worry about his basketball IQ. He had many moments this season where he just looked lost and unaware of the situation in front of him, and that worries me in an increasingly intelligent NBA. I'm also not sure if his shooting marks are necessarily repeatable, as he shot a lot of mid-range twos, and his 64% free throw percentage suggests that the 42% from three may have been a fluke. At 33, I have Robert Woodard II. Woodard impressed me due to his brick house build of 6'7", 230 pounds. He also really refined a lot of his offense from his freshman to sophomore season as he shot an efficient 43% from three and 49.5% from the field. Woodard also impresses me as a hustle guy, as he can always be seen diving for loose balls and fighting for contested boards. He does the little things well. Defensively, Woodard's frame allows him to guard pretty much one through four with adequate success, and I'd bet on that translating to the NBA. I do worry about if his foot speed and lateral quickness will hold up enough in the NBA, and I also have concerns about this lack of quickness offensively, as he tends to run into trouble with the ball in his hands, and he can't really generate separation when driving. At 32, I have San Diego State guard Malachi Flynn. I really like Flynn's tenacity on the defensive end. He's very sound in his on-ball coverage and very alert off the ball, which leads to creating a lot of turnovers just by effort alone. Flynn's offense is also worth discussing, as he averaged 17.6 points and 5 assists per game while leading the Aztecs to a probable one seed had the NCAA tournament occurred. He is an extremely smart player on both ends and doesn't make many mistakes. I worry about his overall upside as he's only 6'1 and a limited but functional athlete, but I still really buy Flynn as a rotational piece in the NBA, at worst. At 31, I'll take Duke wing Cassius Stanley. Stanley is one of the most athletic players in the class, and he shot 36% from three as a freshman this past season. Something tells me we may be overthinking him as a prospect. I think Stanley has first round upside, but he falls just short of that in these rankings. His skill set is just what NBA teams are looking for, and he's an extremely hard worker, which is apparent on the defensive end, as Stanley chases shooters around screens relentlessly and offers solid man-to-man resistance. He is raw offensively. He's a bit uncomfortable with the ball in his hands, and his pull-up jump shooting numbers aren't awe-inspiring. But in a pinch, I'll take the 6'6 generational athlete who averaged 13-6 for a loaded Duke team last year. So that wraps up part three of my 2020 NBA Draft Big Board Reveal. If you have any questions, comments, criticisms, make sure you go ahead and comment below. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon for part four.